can go further back if you want. Hello friends, welcome to another Wednesday Quickie. If today is the first time visiting with our channel, we want to invite you to review our almost 400 videos. We're very, very close. Now, do you remember where we are? 397. 397 something, right? We have arranged them for your convenience in playlists so you can choose what fits your needs. And I think you will enjoy most of them, if not all of them. If you've been here before and you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe and also hit the notification button so you will know every time we upload a new video. We have been consistently uploading twice a week. We might have a small disruption in the next couple of months as we're moving from Kansas to North Carolina, but we will do our best to keep the videos coming twice a week. If we miss one or two, we apologize in advance, but we are not stopping making videos. Just know we are in the transition at this moment. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. Today we have a very, very exciting episode for you. We are going to talk about the most exciting tool in the toolbox. And what would that be, Alpida? Saw. Not just any saws. Hand saws. Hand tools, right? Yeah. And there, there is a variety of them, and we're going to talk about the different use and why we need more than one saw. Or do we need more than one saw? Of course. So, let's go to our bench and let's talk saws. Okay, and we are at our bench here, and we have arranged our saws and we're going to talk about each one of them. Here, the first one is a traditional American saw. You can use it to cut miters or freehand cut virtually any type of wood. I'm going to use this piece of scrap for small demonstrations. This saw cuts in both directions, right? You can see that. It is not the fastest saw to cut with, and sometimes it is a good idea to run a, a bar of soap on the teeth and that will allow you to cut with ease, you know? Buck Brothers is a very well-known uh, American-made uh, brand of soap and this is not a very expensive saw, you notice it has a plastic instead of a, a wooden handle and this is an all-around basic saw, right? You can use it for, for anything. So we'll put that aside and we're going to, to our next saw. This is known as a pruning saw. And what, what this saw is used for is actually cutting branches. And it can actually cut even substantial pieces of wood. It is a little harder to start, but it, once you start it is an easy saw to work on. And if it gets loose, this is a little better quality than the first saw. As you can see, you can potentially change the blade if the blade goes down. It has a wooden uh, handle. The only problem with this saw is that as you reach the edge here, you can actually bend it if you're not careful. You, you want to take a guess how I know that? You've done it. I've done it, <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I don't know if you can see this, it has a little play here, which means I need to fix it. <laughs> but it is easy, this saw, you just tighten those two screws and it becomes perfect. I'm not going to use it on our, our sample because this is really the wrong amount, uh, the, the wrong material. Or maybe I will use it to show you. You have to start it first, and then... It is not the fastest saw, but it eats through material. You notice it makes actually a substantially bigger, it gives a substantially wider curve compared to this, which was our back saw, right? Mm -hmm. And this will be our pruning saw. The next saw we're going to talk about is a coping saw. And it's called the coping saw because it is often used to make very minute cuts, right? and to make 45 degrees in, in, in things like uh, Finnish carpentry. Uh, what do we call them? The things that go on top of the, the wall? Molding. 
molding or uh, shoes or, or thin, things of this nature. It gets fine teeth. And one of the neat things about this saw is that you can actually rotate the blade inside. So, should I do that or not? It is an easy saw to use, as you can see. It removes material quickly because it has a lot of teeth per inch. You can see this is probably the fastest saw we've used so far, right? And it has a nice thin curve. Again, compare it to the curve of the pruning saw. You would not use a pruning saw for anything but cut branches, right? Mm -hmm. Our next saw is actually not a woodworking saw, but instead it is a metal cutting saw, often referred to as a hack saw, right? Most hack saws can ac accept uh, blades of different length. You can see this little uh, indent. It has several indents, so we're in a second indent here, right? So this can take various size uh, blades, which make it very versatile. The blades have ultra fine teeth. I don't know if you can see it or not. Probably it's too close. Still the same. So the super fine teeth. Super magnifying, no, magnifying. Super awesome camera, it's supposed to be able to focus, but it's not really hold on. Well, we just like super, super fine. You and my camera boxing, stop it. And we will use a, a piece of metal pipe here as an example. But you're going to see this is an easy saw to start. And makes a quick job as you can see. Right? I don't know, can you see it or not? Okay. This saw is not a good saw for woodworking. The, the teeth are too fine and really they don't do a good job. Will they cut through wood? They will, but it's not. you cannot control it as well. You won't be able to make a vertical or horizontal cut. It, it is not really intended for that purpose. And the, for last, I left my two favorite saws. They're both Japanese style saws. And the way you know a Japanese style saw is from the handle. Most of them have a bamboo handle surrounding a, a wooden what you would call that, a wooden yeah. shaft. And how you know it's a Japanese saw? Because it has Japanese on it. <laughs> that was a joke, <laughs> right? Yeah. It, also styled it is one of my favorite saws. There's no question about it, right? And if we come here, I know I moved a little too fast, didn't I? It is a very fast saw, as you can see. I mean, look, with very little effort, Look how fast I'm cutting through this video. It is probably one of the fastest saws to I mean, look at the difference. I mean... Now, saws are designed to cut on a different stroke, either a push or a pull. Does that make sense? Yes. And then we have this Second style of Japanese saw, and I don't know if that's truly Japanese because I don't see Japanese on it, but it is a Japanese saw, I'm joking, right? The advantage of these saws, they are very flexible, as you can see. So you could potentially go down on the floor if you have to cut a, let's say, a door jam or something. They, they will do it with this, right? And you can also bend it like so, can you see? So it's a very flexible. So something you can do with this saw, for example, because on the top is reinforced. So this is a very good saw to cut, let's say, dovetails. It has very good control. But there are a lot of things that you can do. For example, this wouldn't work very well that way because it will be very hard for you to, well, to control it. Well, you could affect the angle of your cut basically because it's got that reinforced top. Right. right, right, absolutely. So here is the, the other Japanese saw. And again, you can see, like the first one, 
very easy cut. Let's reverse it. And here you see more pronouns. We should have probably used some classic. You see a little more pronouns the push versus pull. This saw likes to push the feet, and this saw likes to pull. You see the difference? Now you can pull and push, but the saw cuts more precisely in this direction on this side, and in this direction on this side. Now, as you can see, I have difficulty staying precise, so how you do that? One of the best ways in any saw is to use your... Don't cut your finger. You use it only as a guide, right? I apologize, we should have actually... And once you start it, then the stop will stay, right? Does that make sense? Yes. Can you see them here on the... You want to see the other side? Yes. And this has, it looks like double teeth. Yes, and it, they're actually a little offset. I don't know if you can see them on camera, but they also go right and left. In other words, they're not straight in, in the line. I don't know if we can capture it on camera, but... I mean, it's not a huge thing, but they're... They're less aggressive than the other side. You can see that, right? Yeah. See the other one. This is more like this side. Yeah. So it's got the offset T. Right. Um, these are just finer. So really fine teeth. And if you are more careful than I am, you will not bend it like I did and, and then Peter very graciously tries to hide my mistake there. But I was in a hurry. These saws are very thin. And because they are very thin, of course they have this flexibility that other shows don't have. But in the same... But this one's reinforced, right? This one is reinforced. But it still has some flexibility too. Yeah, here is very thin, as you can see. I don't know if you can see or not. Yeah. And you are not supposed to cut starting this way. No. And that's what I did. And I mean, it still works fine. I just have lost a, a very small area of the saw because I bend it. And if you bend it, it's going to turn on you. So it, it, it is not a good thing. Now, another important thing, you notice on the Japanese saw, I hold it like so, right? Mm -hmm. And that gives me full control of the saw. A lot of times people say, well, these saws don't have good control. And, and this is not entirely true. People call the saw, hold the saw like this. And look what the saw wants to do, right? I mean, let's put it on the, here. Here? On the here. You see how easy, you see how I cannot control this one? Yeah. So I will never make a, a nice cut. You hold this saw as you hold the gun actually. So by doing that, and you're going to see in the car, you see the difference? The saw now doesn't move because I can steer it using my finger. Right? Again, this is the saw I probably should have brought a, a piece of saw because it's not a saw that I use very frequently, actually. But if you want to cut dovetails or if you want to cut miters on a miter box or something like that, as long as it doesn't exceed the, this dimension, yeah, this is a saw that will do this job. It does a very good job. And if you, once you reach a pace, you can actually do really good work with it. This is also a saw that you can cut uh, plastic pipe with. I wouldn't re recommend using the Japanese saws with anything but wood because they're going to actually get ganked up. I mean, again, I don't know if you can see how this is designed, but it is quite different than the Japanese saws. So this will cut, cut PVC or plastic or things of this nature. Now, I like to protect my saws. I have lost the other, it's supposed to have both sides uh, plastic. 
Yeah. And if you have them, don't throw them away. It's a good way to make your soul last a very long time. Because that way, I mean, if I if I knock it on something, and I, I didn't do any damage on the teeth. on the, the teeth, and if you do damage to the teeth, the, to the soul will bind. And if you saw this soul binds, it's going to do this, right? Unlike this soul, that if it binds, it will make it harder to to cut. But it is very hard. I cannot really bend it, as you as you see, right? So protect the blades. Coping saws and hack saws in general do not bind. Can you see them or do I look like a crazy person? Yeah. The saws? Hack saws don't bind at all because they have a lot of tension, right? You can see here this nut applies tension to the blade. Right? Okay. So this, this saw will not bind. However, because it has so many fine teeth, when the teeth are worn, it is much easier to wear these teeth because they are not big at all. I don't know if you can see this at all. You can barely see them. So, this blade actually is about done. But very, very easy to change uh, the blade. And we have a couple of uh, hacksaws and they work beautifully. I mean, we never had any problem with them. So this is our episode for today. This is our quickie. Was it a quickie or returning to a longie? We're getting a little long. All right. There you are. Uh, so we hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please smash that like button. If you didn't, the other button works as well. Remember, a little kitten dies every time you put a dislike on YouTube. That's, I didn't make those rules, that's, that, that's the rule. Share, like, subscribe, and let us know what you want to see in this channel. And we appreciate your support. We are very close to 4,000 subscribers. Do you remember how far many apart we are? The in the 20, yeah. rates, 20 or 30 people range. So if you have not subscribed, this will be a great opportunity to subscribe. And we appreciate your support. We appreciate if you have reached this point and you're still watching. We really appreciate you sticking with us for this time. From the Grass Wizard, Elpida and the Urban Homesteading channel, we bid you a great week and we'll see you on the weekend.